So when you hear the word Mother's Day, what comes to mind? Girl power, that's what comes to my mind. So Cole, what makes your mom so special? Well, she does give me a lot of toys. She makes her so special because she gives me candy like every day and she gives me a soda. All right, so Nathan, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the words Mother's Day? Oh. Oh. So what makes your mom so cool? You don't know? Is there anything cool about your mom? Uh, uh she loves me a lot and, and I love her a lot and, and I give her something special too. You give her something special? What do you give her? Uh, I don't remember. What makes your mom so special? She, she would do anything for me. What's the very first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word Mother's Day? My mom's funny. And, and, and like last night, she gave me two more sodas. Whoa. So what is the very first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the words Mother's Day? Uh, I don't know. Like last night, in the morning, she just gave me soda and did Cheetos. Is there anything that fun that y'all like to do together? She watches me on the bounties. She watches you on the bounties? What What's the most favorite thing about your mom? Um, that she takes care of me every day. What makes your mom so special? She makes me clean up my room, though. She makes you clean up your room, though. If I say Mother's Day, what pops in your head? M. M? <laughs> okay, that's a good answer. <laughs> All right, so Mitchell, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the words Mother's Day? Um... Mother's Day, I think of Silly, my mom's Silly, and um, she's really good at cooking food. She cooks a lot of food, and she's just the best mom in the whole wide world. I don't even know what to say. Uh, I'm not at a loss many times, but today, in the way of doing something special, I've asked several of our moms to come and be on a, a panel where we're just going to ask some questions and we're going to talk, and, and uh, I don't never ever know where these things always lead. It's always interesting, but I'm going to ask them to come and join me right now. Those that I asked to, to come and serve on the panel, give them a hand clap right now. Yeah, absolutely. I think, Lisa, come down here with me, if you would. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we got one more. So here's, in just a minute, uh, I need microphones handed out. Here we go. It's all right. There's one, two, pass. there we go. Y'all can share them as we talk, so... In this house, we have a long history of supporting women, uh, women's ministry as well as women in ministry. Uh, we, we have made that a, a big part of what we do in encouraging women. And uh, years ago even, I started uh, some classes that we did for a good while uh, entitled uh, Exceptional Women in Ministry. Uh, I don't know if, how many of y'all remember that, but uh, we used to do that a long time ago. And so what I wanted to do today was to just have some fun, ask some questions, and here's what I think will come out of this, is it's not only going to help moms, but it's going to help the men, it's going to help families, um, because this church, I want us... I want us to be a place that touches the family. I want us to be a house that, and, that, and family today represents a lot of different things, but that we put ourselves in a position that we are able to have resources and the talent and the people that when we know something that we don't just keep it to ourselves, but we're willing to share, we're willing to be transparent, uh, we're willing to talk about these things, 
and be the very best that we can be. Amen? So give these ladies another hand clap. Amen? And we don't really have any real order or anything that I was going to kick all this off in, but uh, let me just ask this first question. Today, as we celebrate moms, as we, as we have this day, and, and a lot of times we can talk about all the stuff that we need to do better or, or you know, work on this or whatever, but what's, what's one of the most rewarding things that as you celebrate today, what's one of the most rewarding things? This shouldn't take a long time for you to think about, uh, like, uh, well, uh, uh, anyway, what, when you think about what's rewarding as being a mom, what would one of y'all say? I'll go first. I would say when I pour in my values, or we pour in our values and morals to Gabby, and then watching her come back up and display some of those, or if we're teaching her about prayer, and then she sees a homeless person, and then she wants to pray for yeah. him. So that's rewarding. And you know what I didn't do? Let's introduce everybody first. Okay. That, introduce the panel. Start, start down there. Tell your name and your <coughs> children's names as well. Are we on? Yes. On. Right. My name is Chastity Lowe, and I have three boys. Um, their names are BJ, Brennan, and Brody. That's awesome. Yay. <laughs> Go ahead. Jennifer. Um, my name is Jennifer Johnson, and I have two daughters, Gabrielle and Kaylee. My name is Lauren Galvin, and I have four children. I have Connor, he's 18, Caleb is 13, Gianna is 8, and Cole is 5. And he gets Coke and Cheetos for breakfast. He gets Coke and Cheetos for breakfast every morning. I'm trying, going for the Mom of the Year award, so. (laughs) Sometimes two Cokes for breakfast, as he mentioned. I'm Tori Woolridge. I have one daughter named Gabby, and she does not get soda. <laughs> <laughs> my, name's, <laughs> my name's Dee Howard. I have three girls, Logan, who does our news feed, um, Madison, and Kennedy. That's awesome. And I am Lisa. Uh, I have two children, Lauren uh, Galvin and Kyle Turpin. And I never gave them Coke and Cheetos. Uh, <laughs> I really don't give him Coke and Cheetos. That, <laughs> it's a joke. That is, that's a joke. <laughs> I do remember walking out about 6 a.m. one morning, and Kyle is sitting in the kitchen with the pizza box left over from last night, about 6 a.m., eating cold pizza uh, in the kitchen there. Uh, he figured if he got up early, he would... Uh, beat us to it so anyway but his mom kind of likes cold pizza for breakfast sometimes too so anyway who else what are what are some other rewarding things I mean when you think about this what are some things so actually if uh, you could put that on the screen I just sent this to um, our media team because I was thinking about this earlier but um, what's really rewarding for me is when I get things like this from my kids Um, my son Caleb came home from school the other day and had said, Mom, I want to give you an early Mother's Day card. And he says, thank you for always loving me. Thank you for the clothes on my back. Thank you for punishing me when I need it. (laughs) Thank you for all the extra things you buy me that I really don't need. Um, Thank you for always letting me have friends over. And you know, stuff like that is really special to me because as a mom, you you don't always feel like you're doing everything right. In fact, you know, you feel like you're probably doing 50% right sometimes, sometimes even less than that, sometimes more than that. You have really good days. But um, but when I get stuff like this, it just reminds me that my kids, they love me for me, and I don't have to get it right all the time. Um, And it's just really something that's special. Is there a lot of pressure to get it right? Mm -hmm. Yes? Absolutely. I think women are great about putting on a facade coming to church with your makeup on and looking just right and your outfit and you know because we want everybody to think that we've got it going on right you know and we don't want to be vulnerable because we think everybody else has it going on so we can't be or we can't share who we are or what we're really going through or what's going on in our lives because we don't want to be the only one uh, that has things going on y'all think sometimes you're the only one Go ahead, Chastity. I have. um, (laughs) I have three boys, of course, so, you know, it can get a little chaotic. 
Um, and I think as a mom, just sometimes just trying to keep it together. And then another thing, I have three different age groups. So that can be a big task, um, just trying to keep everyone on their level. Um, so I know a lot of times for me, I do feel like I'm the only one. But then when I speak up and say something to another mom, I find out that even though, you know, I have kids on different age levels, but they have kids that may be, you know, around the same age group, they still have some of the same challenges just because of the different personalities. So. And I think it's important that moms do speak up and talk about that because based on face value, you really do think that they got it going on. They don't have those problems. They don't have those problems with their teenagers or, or so forth. So I think it's important to speak up as women and, and just open up. And, and those friends that I have disclosed things with, it just blew me away that they were experiencing the same things because I just thought they have it together. Look at her over there. And uh, it really, it's important to really just speak up and talk about those problems, have friends that you can really right. talk to. Yeah. It, is it good to have those, those safe places where you can talk and maybe it's a small group or just a couple of friends or something like that? Is that, is that hard to find? I don't know that it's necessarily hard to find, but I think that things that we put in our lives like social media and Facebook and Instagram, things like that can intensify the feeling that you might be feeling that maybe you're not yeah. good enough or you see that someone you know, post a really nice picture, or, you know, really nice, whatever it is that they're doing, and then you start, there's a comparison that can happen um, if you're not careful. So I think that it's really important to be, number one, to be um, open and be kind of vulnerable um, to other women and, um, and be a place where they can come and talk, and then you can come and talk to people, uh, especially like in small groups. If you're in a small group setting, that's a perfect place to do that. In the women's Bible study. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I'm the leader of a small group for single women, but in our first meeting, um, I asked each of us to just share a little bit about ourselves. And it wasn't so much that we were single, we weren't married, we didn't have anybody. It was more about our kids. And we all shared the journey that we had been on, um, where, how we got to where we are today and it really did help I think you know we all left out of there like we had been in a counseling session or something but <laughs> you, you find out that you know everybody has a story everybody has struggles and um, it's good to be in that setting absolutely because you can encourage each other yes and, yes and you've definitely. done the singles and, and we wanted you know a, a lot of you have uh, younger children as well and some different ages you know, across the board, and that's kind of why I wanted uh, just a variety of moms to just be able to talk about their kids and the relationship. Um, and you, you all do some family stuff in our small groups, yes. and and I think don't you find that that a lot of times we compare ourselves, we compare our bad days to somebody else's highlight film, mm -hmm. and all you really see a lot of times on social media, which we we're going to talk about in a minute, is is a highlight reel. And, you know, you see their, their best 10 seconds, you know, right, and you don't see uh, what everything else that goes on. And I think the reality is, and, and what's good for us and us as a church, is that, you know, we just all go, yeah, I've got a story too. Mm -hmm. and, and not every chapter is pretty. And not every chapter is flowery. Right. And, but the, every chapter ends with, God still loves me. And I haven't been forsaken. Because when you face those things, you do feel alone. You do feel like, am I the only one going through this? Am I the only one dealing with that? And what do you, how do you fight through that? What do you do? I mean, I guess you talk to somebody and yeah. what else? I mean, what else? What did you say? I said lots of prayer. Lots of prayer. Um, sometimes yeah. it's a daily thing. It can even be a minute-by-minute minute thing. Right. Um, I constantly have to encourage myself and talk to myself because it does get hard with, you know, having kids. Um, so I would say, you know, a lot of prayer and a lot of just encouraging yourself and really digging deep within to find that inner strength yeah. because it's helped me plenty of days where I was just so tired and just wanted to lay down. But I knew that if I didn't get that stuff ready for the kids the next day, when we got up in the morning, we were going to be late. So... I think through uh, small groups, too. I know we were going through something with one of our kids not too long ago, 
and I took it to our small group because a lot of the people in our small group had kids that were older than than mine. And I want to get wisdom from someone who has been there and done that and has experienced it because if there's anything I have learned, I've learned that why go through it the hard way if you can take the wisdom and experience from someone who's already done that and um, can can speak into your life. And they literally, at the end of our small group, they surrounded Johnny and I in prayer and they just prayed over the situation and prayed over our kids. And that was so encouraging to me to know that within that group that we had people that were on our side, that they were for us, they were for our family. And even throughout that week, we were getting text messages just, hey, just want to let you know we've been praying for you. How's this going? What's going on? It was just really encouraging. And had we entered into that setting and just like not talked about it and not shared about it, then number one, we're not, we're not really being real. And if we're not being real, then we're not being approachable. And I think that um, that helped them then open up to go. Everybody goes, hey, we've been through this too. It's very encouraging. Yeah. Does the word overwhelm ever come into your vocabulary? Yes. Yes. Uh, just this week. Just this, week? <laughs> just this morning? This morning. <laughs> go ahead, Tori. It does? Oh, I think so. I think that we are so used to, to try to do so many different things. And we are pulled at different areas and different working and trying to, you know, be a part of the church and try to do this and that and be with friends. And we do get overwhelmed. I think it's so easy to do that. And we as women and moms have to step back and actually do Mm self-care during those times. Because if we don't, you can't pour into an empty cup. What does that mean? What does self-care mean? Self-care is taking care of yourself, doing things, or pour from an empty cup is what I meant. But you can't do things for others if you are not full within yourself. So we need to hang out with each other to lift each other up, have fun, you know, get massages, eat sushi, you know. <laughs> yeah. But but do things for us. as, hint, as hint, hint, like hint. Day gift or something like <laughs> hint, that. Hint, yeah, there we go. hint, hint, massage. <laughs> but because <laughs> we can't, if we can't take care of ourselves, it's hard to take care of others. We just, well, we just implemented that in our home probably like two months ago. And it wasn't just for me. It was for my husband, too, that we said, like, we have enough stress. There's enough that goes on. And sometimes, like for us, it was our routine. When you have four kids and they're all going different directions, I mean, sometimes you get in the routine of like, get up, go to work, you know, the kids go to school, you come home, you cook dinner, you do laundry, you prepare the next, I mean, it's a routine. And sometimes you just got to break up the monotony of that routine and do something for yourself. And for us, like my husband wanted to start going back to the gym. I wanted to start. So we said, hey, each of us get an hour and a half a day and we're going to do this. And we, and it's self-care. It's taking care of yourself and giving yourself, you know, an outlet to just and then become a better person. You know, you're not as stressed after you've been to the gym. So, I don't know. The gym stresses me out sometimes. I don't know. That's another whole sermon, I'm sure. Deep. What do you think? I was just going to say, in, in regards to being overwhelmed, I found that because I didn't do a lot of things as a kid. Um, that I try to, you know, compensate that for my kids. So I sign them up to all these different things, and it, it does become overwhelming, but it's, um, it's worth it when I see the smile on their face or see them exceeding in, in some activity. But um, overwhelmed is just part of life right. as a mom. Yeah, yeah. And I think having that place, having that, the, the Bible says in the Psalms, when my heart's overwhelmed, I've got to come back. To you, Lord. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. I've got to have that as a foundation of my life that I know that it's it's still going to be stable. It's shaking. It's there's a lot going on, but this too shall pass. And and I tell my staff, it'll be okay. You'll get through it in those things. What uh, to make sure we have time to cover some of these things. there's a lot of different types of families that are represented not just here, but in our church. Uh, there's blended families, there's single parent families. Um, what, what challenges and solutions do, do you see? What, what are some things that you face maybe in a blended family or as a single parent that you deal with and, and how do you find solutions to that? I'll go ahead and talk from a blended perspective. I don't know if you all know, but Logan, 
was not um, born from me, birthed from me, but um, she's my daughter. Yeah. And I think it's important that you don't add step to anything. You treat them as your child, and That's it's good. very important. <clears throat> and um, I love her. She loves me. And I'm just going to share her uh, Mother's Day yeah. text. She's Go not ahead. here. And uh, this just proves that it, it really matters on the way you, uh, you treat them. So sorry, Logan, if you're watching this. I'm reading your text. <laughs> but it says, Happy Mother's Day, Dee. I know I don't tell you every day, but I'm extremely thankful for you and the presence you've had in my life. <clears throat> Not many women would ex be accepting of taking in some else's, someone else's child, but you did, and you treated me as your own. And I am forever grateful. I know I can never repay you, but I will try my best. I love you today and every day. Wow. Yeah. So I think it's really important that you don't make a difference between your children. And I know it's a challenge you've got. Uh, the mom, that, the biological mom that you have to deal with, or the, the dad in, in some cases. But it's just really important that you just treat them and instill the values that you have. And I know that that can be a challenge, too, because if they go back to their mom and they have different values, then you're hitting the reset button every time, every time. But I can mm -hmm. tell you in a test from Logan that it, it's worth it. Just go through it and just continue to show them love and get rid of that step. That's your child. That's good. That's good. That's good. Um, I, I can speak on both topics. I was first in a blended family. Um, I'm now divorced, but I do have a bonus daughter, and I didn't even mention her name, but her name is Alexia, and she's older now. Um, but it, it was trying, very trying. Um, I loved her just like she was my own, but the thing that helped with our blended family was that her mother supported me and I supported her. Um, we were friends and um, we could talk to each other about the struggles that we were going through and we decided to bring our kids together and do things as mothers together um, so that they wouldn't feel that tension growing up throughout the years. Um, and then after I got divorced, um, for the past five or six years, I've been a single mother. So um, I think that's been more trying just because, you know, dealing with, like you said, the different values. And, you know, I just heard my daughter tell me last night, well, I'm at dad's this week, so I don't have to ask you. I ask my dad. And I'm like, mm. yeah. you know, yeah. um, so it's getting beyond those points. Um, and raising teenagers is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Especially a 16-year-old that just started driving. I've already been through it once. But, <laughs> but you know, what? one thing I learned that, that as a parent, when you instill what your values are and you tell them and you're trying to teach them and you think they're not listening they really are they can't let you know because that's not cool they don't want you to think you're right and that that, that you might actually know something but the, the day i learned that was when i heard my own daughter in her bedroom on the phone with her friend saying well my mom says and she's she's speaking into her friend's life because her friend was was having some issues and troubles and so you know i thought well, she really did hear me <laughs> i mean she was like almost verbatim and that really made me feel good that yes you know I, even though i don't think she's listening or or he's listening that they really are but uh, they just don't want you to know they are yeah. And I'll just say to um, the single moms here and any that are there, I, I was raised by a single mom through my teenage years, and we survived. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to encourage all of you. Just I, We're going to talk a, a minute about the church, but I know she did the hard things, and I know that it wasn't easy to, to get us up and get us. We live 30 miles from our church. And we would get up on Sundays, and she would get us there. And we went to school at the same place, and we would drive there for school in the mornings. And you do what you got to do sometimes. It's not easy, but you just, God, God gives a grace is the best way I can say it. And, and don't ever doubt that you're making a difference. 
because you really are. Tori, I, I saw you started to say something. Oh, I was going to say, you know, I hear a lot of love up here, like with blended families and single parents. And I think it's important to keep showing the love because a lot of times people, when there's divorces happening and single parents, they tend to bash the other parent. Yeah. And that is so harmful on that child. And then they end up resent, resenting that parent. Yeah. Yeah. And they do listen. So it's important that we do show love and And, and they guidance. do overhear, even yes. when you think they're not listening. Right. They do hear what, what's right. going on sometimes. Somebody else? Let, let me ask this question. I wanted to get this out there because I think this affects a lot of people. How much influence does social media have in your house, whether it's phones, iPads, playing games on the, on the phones? How do you all, I mean, I think I know the answer is yes, it does, but how, what do you all do about that? How do, what do you do in your house in regards to all that electronic stuff? So, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, <laughs> go, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. No, you, no, you go ahead. So um, we actually just kind of, we're going through this now. We've got an 18-year-old, a 13-year-old, or 8- and 5-year-old. Um, we can monitor them a little bit better. But to be totally out there, we told our kids, hey, we are putting an app on your phone. It's called Safer Kids. And if you're talking about social media and parenting. Just all of it. All of I mean, yeah. And we put an app on their phone, and it tracks their social media use, their text message use, their, you know, we can see what websites they're going to and what they're doing. Because as a mom, I have to have some, I cannot be present in their face 24-7, but I also have a mandate from God to protect my children and to do what I can do um, to make sure that they are safe and that I can answer and say, you know, hey, I've done the best I can do to keep my, my kids safe. And they don't like it. I even had one give me their phone back and just say, hey, then I don't even want a phone. I said, that's totally cool. You don't have to have a phone. Uh, but, you know, and it's, it's making those tough calls as a parent. They're not going to like it. I didn't like it. But I know now that it was what was good for me. It was what was best for me. So thank you. Because they, they don't know. They don't understand. And I'm not, I'm not there to be their friend when it comes to social media. I'm there to be their parent. That's, and, um, that's big right there. And so the, the cutoff times and stuff, and I mean, yeah, they play video games and things like that, but if it starts to become too much or if, or if it's affecting schoolwork or things like that, then we, we, we take it away and we say, hey, you know, we're not going to, your schoolwork comes first, the grades come first, we have a rule in our home that if anything ever, at any point, even if it's before a progress report comes out, if it drops below a C, games and everything are taken away until those grades come back up because we have to teach our kids priorities and what's important and video games and technology and social media does not take precedence over your grades and your attitude and how you treat us and how you respect us and there's a lot of factors that go into that. Somebody else? Jesse? I was just going to say pretty much the same thing that Warren said is um, my boys, they are not allowed to be on any kind of electronics during the week. Um, I'm very big on education, so they know um, up front um, that there's no, it, even if they don't have homework, uh, try not to make any exceptions. Um, now, if I know they don't have school the next day, then I may, but other than that, they know not to even ask during the week. Um, also, um, when they are on there, um, I can go in and I can monitor it at any time. Um, all their accounts and stuff like that um, are tied to my email, so I can see what all they're doing. Also, the app um, that Lauren was talking about, I have that on one of my son's um, cell phones. So you definitely, I feel as a parent, need to know what your children are doing. Even my teenage <clears throat> son, um, I've had some challenges with him, but he knows if I asked him to see that phone, he better hand it over. Um, and it doesn't matter if he's with me or if he's with his dad. Um, if he doesn't hand it over, then he can't have it while he's with me. That's just my policy. Um, so as a parent, I would definitely say, you know, you need to know. It is, it's your responsibility to know what your children are doing. Because ultimately, if they're doing or getting into something that they shouldn't be into, they're going to come back to you. That's good. And it's not an invasion of their privacy. 
they have no privacy until they pay the rent, okay? Don't be their friend. I encourage you all to tweet that. Your kids have no privacy until they pay the rent. And put a tag, Lisa Turpin. So, I think the youth are in here. What's that? I said the youth are in here. Yeah, so. I know they are. I know. So that's, that's, that's good. Go I ahead. Ha I have something to say again. So <clears throat> something that we have talked about in our home, and I know we need to get better at it, but, you know, I, I say we need to put the phones away. Yeah. Because yeah. those are taken over. If you go out they to are. eat at a restaurant or Amen. anything, people are just texting and looking at their phones and scrolling through it, we need to put it away. Because kids Amen. notice when we're not paying attention to them and we're attached to these phones. And so we need to bring back game nights and yeah. you know, and bring out the, the game boards with them and put the phones away. Amen. That's what I, I, think. I just think yeah. that's so true. And you're, you're not talking to the kids, you're talking to the adults, right? Adults. Right. I think there Preach. was actually a... A report that came out this week, I think maybe Diane Sawyer did it, um, and it w I didn't get to watch the whole thing, um, but I've got it recorded, and it was just the tidbits that I saw was so interesting, and the thing that really got me was the fact that <laughs> she did, it, it affects your animals, like it showed where um, you're sitting there on your phone and the animal will get up in your face and like tap your hand right. or right. so if it's affecting your animals then it's definitely <laughs> affecting your kids <laughs> i i agree wholeheartedly i maybe we need to declare this week to be phone free. phone free except for emergencies or something you know i mean put them down at the dinner table put them away just let's do that let's this, is that helping anybody is that i know it's a challenge and and i know it's a challenge for adults that you hear that ding and you think you got to go check it right then. What did you do in 92? We didn't have that. There's a silent button. You know, it's exactly. Somebody posted, you know, this is how we blocked somebody back in the, in the 80s. You took the phone off the hook, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's how we blocked you, you know. The phone's off the hook. And All right. We, we've been talking um, the last couple of weeks, and this all kind of ties together. We can kind of wrap up with a little bit of this. I hope this is helping you all. That the last few weeks, I've just had in my heart that church really does matter. And we've been talking about this. And, and, and I don't know where all God's taken it, but in your home, I think teaching these values that you already know, but you learn a lot of them here still as adults, and... And what, what does the church do that helps you? What can we do better? How, do you, how are you taking those values and teaching them in your home? Do you have family prayer time for five minutes? Do you, what do you do? What, what, what's happening in your house that is working, that's helping? All of that's kind of tied in. Um, I'll start first, and I think I've shared this before, but we are uh, very strong believers in praying first, giving God your first. So our children, we pray together on our way to the bus stop, and okay. they'll almost miss the bus to ensure that they're praying because okay. they want to pray. And they'll pray about a game, a test, a teacher, a friend, their school. I mean, there's no limits. They know they how. Pray. They pray. They pray. pray. They good. pray. That's and good. we'll pray together. And I think that's important just to instill the, that value of, of giving God your first. And we learn right. a lot of those things here and we engage our children in things. Uh, Kennedy helps with the children's church. She's actually out in the back now, I think, yeah. uh, babysitting the toddlers. Uh, Ken's done elder and teaching. Logan's done the news feed. She's involved in the ministry, the, the youth ministry. Right. So I think our church offers a lot for every group. And I've seen that through my children, how much they have, they've grown in this church, just being fed from our church. So I'm yeah. very appreciative appreciative of TWOC and, and what we give That's to our good. children. Somebody else? I think that in addition to all to that, because it's really good, I think that how we just live our daily lives. I mean, kids are going to, they're going to see what you do before they remember what you say. And they need to see us living out what we're telling them to live out. Because number one, teenagers see through everything. That's, we know that. But as our kids are even younger and they're, 
and they're growing up. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of grace in our home. We, um, we're very open and transparent with our kids because if I mess up as a parent, I want to let my kids know, hey, I want to come to them. You know what? I messed up, and I shouldn't have done that, and I should have, shouldn't have responded that way because then what that does, number one, I'm showing them the grace that Jesus gives. I need grace. They need grace, yes. um, and I'm showing them the love of the Father, but then what I'm doing is I'm also opening up a door for when they mess up, then now they feel like they can come and they can talk to me or they can talk to their dad, and so... Um, one way that we do it in our home is we just live it out. We just, and when we mess up, we admit that we've messed up and we ask for forgiveness and we apologize. And um, so that's just one really practical way that you can do it. Somebody else? Yes. I agree with Lauren. Um, what I do, like she said, is that your daily routine, living it out. So in the mornings during the week, um, the boys and I will do praise and worship. And I'm on the praise and worship team, and that's my love. But that's part of my daily routine. Oh, so good. when we get up in the morning, we have the Alexa. So on my Alexa app, I'll play them the good morning song so they can wake up. And then after that, it's praise and worship music. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. And they're to a point now where they look forward to that. Um, because even my six-year-old, he'll request a certain praise and worship song. And then that's sometimes... Good. We're just riding in the car, and they're just singing a cappella amongst themselves. So it really starts with you as the parent and displaying, um, you know, your daily routine and your love for God. And then also um, just being able to sit down and have prayer time. I do that with them. We don't do it every day. But I try to make moments where we just sit down in the circle or sit down on the couch when we're, you know, having wind down time and watching TV. We'll stop for a second and we'll just pray. And I'll let each one of them pray about something specific. Um, sometimes it's about something that went on with one of their friends and we'll lift their friend up in prayer. So, again, just, you know, it starts with you as the parent and try to make time for That's those good. kind of things because it's very important. Yeah. I think to hit on the second part of that question, um, what can the church do for me? Right. I can honestly say nothing because we have so many opportunities here at this church. Wow. And it is truly what you put into it, where you get involved, what you decide to um, put into the church. You know, I, I started out here a few years ago and I just started working in the nursery and um, that was my little baby steps and I just started getting more and more involved in um, different aspects throughout the church um, but it, it's definitely what you put into it that's really good that's really good as we wrap up Lisa you you posted something this week um, that here here's the reality is today as we celebrate for a lot of people, this is a hard day. This, this isn't necessarily, you know, maybe you lost your mom, maybe there's issues, maybe you weren't raised in the kind of home that you could really celebrate. What, what do you say to people that, you know, go, be, being a mom's tough. You guys have the toughest job in the world, bar none. And um, if men had to give birth, there would be no children. Uh, and, uh, but it's a, uh, it, it's, it, it can be hard sometimes. Yeah. What do you say to moms who struggle and well, this is a hard time? First of all, I say my heart hurts for you. Um, my heart hurts for the mother um, who, right, maybe today you don't have a relationship with your child for whatever reason. Uh, they're not talking to you or uh, my heart hurts for the one who just, who maybe has lost their mom and doesn't have that mother to celebrate on a day like this. Uh, my heart hurts for the woman who longs to have a child but maybe is infertile and can't. And coming and seeing people have children all around them, that's hurtful, but you know, you may not ever know it because they're putting on that face. My heart hurts for the one who maybe had a miscarriage or had an abortion 
those mothers, those women, my heart hurts for you. But I would say that first and foremost, God sees you. That's good. You are not by yourself. God sees you when you cry those tears on your pillow. Mm -hmm. God sees you when you cry out and say, God, I want my child. I want that relationship, and I don't have it. And God sees you. God is not untouched by your, your pain. That's good. And, and second, I would say that, like we've touched on before, we have any one of these women on stage and out in our church membership that would pray for you, that would be there in your time of pain or hurt, that would be there to help you or just even give you a hug. You know, sometimes you don't want, you don't need any more advice. You know what needs to be done, but you just need to feel that human touch of a hug or someone to send you a text and say, I'm praying for you this week. Yeah. You have that here in this church. But more than that, as much as we would love to pray for you and be there for you and say words of encouragement to you, we have to know that you're hurting. Yes. We have to be able to see beyond that mask that you put on on Sunday morning. You have to let someone know that you're hurting because we can't pray for something we don't know about. And yeah. it's so important mm -hmm. to just be real. And ladies, you know, I would say if someone did come to you saying, you know, I'm having this problem with my children or I'm in pain, I'm hurting for whatever reason, you know, don't pretend you have it all together and that you have all the answers. Maybe you do, but let them know that you're real too. That either you, you know, if you've gone through it or been through it or, you know, somehow you can either empathize or sympathize with them, that they are not by themselves, that, that you too don't always have it going on, that you too go through some of the same things that they go through. Right. And just help one another. <clears throat> don't be... <clears throat> Don't be acting like you, you are better, that, you know, your children are perfect. You know, we all know they're not. <laughs> so, you know, but just be real. And so, you know, and for those that are hurting today that can't celebrate yeah. Mother's Day, you are not alone in this yeah. church. We love you. God loves you, and God sees you. That's good. And this has not That's good. <clears throat> Give them a big hand clap. Y'all just stay right here. This, this was not intended to be a commercial for our small groups or Bible studies, but I want to tell you, that's where you can get plugged in. That's where you can talk to people and meet people and get encouraged and, and get prayed for. And I want to just add just a couple of thoughts, and, and then we'll be done here in just a moment. But the fact, the, I believe, and I think Lauren used the word grace, I, I believe that because we've been given grace, that we have to extend it as well. And I think that's true with our kids and in our families and in our church, and that you live a life of grace. You live that way. And sometimes when people see you living a life of grace and you're forgiving and you're caring and, and people hurt you, but like you said, you just get up and you, and you get here and, and you, you get through it and all of that, that that doesn't mean that while you're living a life of grace, you're also not living a life of pain. And you're going through stuff, and you're dealing with stuff, and there are tears, and there's hurts, but you get up, and God gives you the grace to get through every single day. And whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is, this too shall pass, and God will give you the grace and the help uh, in the midst of your pain that you go through it, and you don't quit, don't give up. Don't stop. One of the, what I love about all these ladies is that, and Dee kind of alluded to it, is get your kids here and get them here when they don't want to be here and, and get them involved and, 
Don't just, you know, let them go do whatever. Uh, have them plugged in, not just attending, but get them plugged in and, and do those things. It's, it's tougher today, probably, than when we were raised, I'm guessing. Uh, I mean, I see all the issues and all the things that, that go on, but we still got to step up to the plate. We still have to do the work. And, and I encourage all you moms and, and families, let's do this thing together. I, I, I want this to be family church. I want this to be a place, no matter what your family looks like, one person or 10 or 15, that you find help here and you get, you're not judged here, but we'll help you. We'll get you through whatever it is that you, you're facing. And then you'll turn around and help somebody else. You'll pay it forward to somebody else. Amen. You'll help somebody else because you've been helped. Let me, let me share this last thing. This past week, <clears throat> and, and ushers get ready. We're going to hand these bottles out in a minute. This week, I had the privilege of going down to a ministry that's in downtown Louisville, down on Muhammad Ali, around 7th Street, called Beside You for Life. And Beside You for Life is a ministry to women, uh, and they offer a lot of different things. And we've done this baby bottle campaign before, but I'm going to put more emphasis on it this year because I got to actually see what they did. And a group of pastors, we went down there and we went down there to pray for them. They do uh, pre-abortion and post-abortion counseling. They teach life skills. They've got a four-story building there where every day uh, people are coming in to get help. Uh, they'll, they'll do um, counseling, women thinking about having abortions, uh, women who have had them and are struggling. Uh, they'll counsel them. They have a pastoral staff there they've got they're feeding kids they got a kitchen they're feeding parents and kids sitting together they're but they're they're not just like saying okay we want we we want to get you through this part i mean they're there for life they're there to help these women and the families and through any any stage that they're going through but i tell you what when we can support a ministry that is helping women who are making decisions about whether or not to keep their babies. And the count that I heard this past week was 800 people decided, 800 women decided not to have abortions in our city this year, this past year. And uh, put that quote up if you would. This is what I said to you last week. And, and this is a shift that is happening in my own heart. I want to. This is a quote from John Maxwell. He said, "I want to make a difference with people who want to make a difference, doing something that makes a difference." And so, I went to the guy there at Beside You for Life, and I said, "We need more bottles because what they do is they ask us to fill these up with change, or you can fill it up with." dollar bills or $20 bills or $100 bills, whatever. And it goes to support the ministry and the great work that they're doing there in our city. So I brought back 100 bottles with me and we had some already back there. A couple of weeks ago, this is a very unusual church. A few weeks ago, I handed out to you poker chips that say all in. Today, I'm going to let you get a baby bottle. Poker chips and baby bottles. So right now, I filled up some boxes, and the deacons and the ushers are going to pass these around. Here's what I would encourage you to do. Every family, take a couple. Get your kids involved in getting change and filling up these bottles. You don't have to explain everything to your kids about what all they do on, on pre-abortion counseling. But, you know, tell them that this helps moms and their kids. It helps moms that are maybe struggling in some areas. Let them fill up these bottles. Let them go get some change and fill it up. Let them take the change out of your console in your car and start filling these things up and making a difference. Amen? Go ahead. Let's Right now, we got boxes that are going to start circulating. Everybody, every family, not everybody, I don't have that many, but every family, take one, two, three bottles. 
however many you think you can fill up. They're passing them out. Pass them down the aisles like you're receiving an offering. There you go. Everybody take one or two or three, however many you can take. I want to spend my life making a difference with people who want to make a difference doing something that makes a difference. I'm at a point in my life where I just can't spin my wheels anymore. My money's got to make a difference. My time has to make a difference. My talent has to make a difference. Say, Pastor, I didn't know you could hand out baby bottles in church. Here we can. I I thank God for over 800 babies that are alive today. There were about 3,000 abortions in our city last year. But thank God for the 800 who didn't. We can make an inroads and we can help those moms and those on Mother's Day. And what we're going to do is they ask us between now and Father's Day to fill these up. When you come in, there's going to be a container back in the back and one back here in the children's wing that you can put those in. And after you get them filled up, bring them in and put them in and we will make sure Beside You for Life receives all of those. They're going to be shocked what Trinity did. We didn't, we didn't do real great last year. I didn't push it. We did okay, but honestly, I, I, didn't, I didn't promote it. I didn't talk about it, but this thing has touched my heart, and I hope it touches yours. I want the Spirit of God to dwell in this house. Amen? There's some up here on the stage. You can get those. What are you going to do? you going to put those in the box and hand out more? All right, go ahead. Oh, okay. All right, that's fine. Let's stand up together. I'm going to ask, I I didn't tell the team I was going to do this, but Judith, I want you to come up here and sing this Holy Spirit song right now. The rest of y'all can come out too. It's okay. Is this the right mic? Is this okay? All right. Here you go. Take that. The presence of the Lord has been in this house today. And before she sings this, let me pray for all the moms right now. Let's bow our heads for just a moment. If you're hurting today, I want you to know you're loved. If you've been through some hell in your family, I want you to know you're loved. That if we didn't hug you enough, or if we didn't know about it, or if we did and we didn't pray for you enough, or we didn't do something on our end, we're going to do better. But I want you to just take a step and say, you know what, I'm going to do better too. I'm going to, I'm going to let people know. I'm going to I'm going to ask for prayer. I'm going to show up in a prayer meeting. I'm going to come to a small group. I'm going to... And men, this applies to us as well. Sometimes as we lead our families, I just, I want to tell you the things that got me through the tough days in my life is I knew somebody was praying for me. I knew that if I could just get prayer, if I could just have somebody pray for me, the Holy Spirit would show up and make a difference. So right now, if you're struggling, I want you to know that you're loved. And Father, we pray for those today that have been through hard times as moms, that have struggled, that sometimes they don't feel like they do enough and they feel overwhelmed. We know this much, that when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. We cry out when we don't know what to do. We say, Holy Spirit, come do a work in us. And moms, if that's you today, I want you to know you're going to make it. You're going to overcome. You're not alone. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. God is going to work it out. I can't say I have all the answers, but I do know the one that does. And the same God that brought one of the moms through before, that brought my mom through, or brought one of the moms through on this stage, that brought them through those tough days, brought them through those nights of crying, through that teenager yelling at you, through the things that didn't work. That same God is going to make a way for you. We're going to do everything we know to do to help you to sound the trumpet in this house. 
to be the church that helps you. Lord, help all of us today. Holy Spirit, have your way. Let this song minister to you as we wrap up. Go ahead, Judith. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing worth more. Thank you, Lord. Than whatever come close. No thing can compare. That's the truth. You're our living home. Yes, you are. Just lift your hands right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love. Where my heart becomes free and my shame is under. seconds but here's what I feel like we need to do if you want to stay and get some prayer I don't want to end this service and and not really give you a time for some one-on-one -on -one prayer so ladies that are on the stage here those of you that were on the panel I want you to come and just stand down here in the front and the service is going to be over but ushers help me kind of keep this front area clear a little bit except for those that want prayer and if you would say, you know, I could use 30 seconds of prayer. I could use somebody just to join hands with me. And, and, uh, and that would mean a lot to me if I could get that. Well, these ladies are here to pray for you. So if you, need, if you need that, if you just desire that, if that's something that would help you today, I want to tell you, when these ladies pray, the Holy Spirit's going to come on you. And your life will never be the same. Lord, I thank you for what you have done in this house today. God, it wasn't orchestrated. It was pure and from the heart. Lord, I pray for again for every mom, every new mom, every mom who's got grandkids and great-grandkids. Lord, all across the spectrum, that's what I love. 
about this church being multi-generational. And Father, I thank you, God, that you're going to help us this week. You're going to help us to lay down our phones. And Lord, we're going to focus more on what matters. And you're going to give us wisdom and knowledge. And God, you're going to do a work, God, that, that, that we can't do. Lord, we'll do what we can, but we ask you to do what we can't do. So, Father, we thank you for all that has happened today. Lord, I thank you this is going to be our greatest week at Trinity. Lord, I thank you lives are going to be changed. Hearts are going to be turned towards you. And, Father, we're going to see breakthroughs come on miraculous levels. That's what I hear. On miraculous levels, God is going to turn it around. And we thank you for it. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. God bless you.